you are given a gift. A gift that is so much more than you can possibly imagine. A gift with innumerable possibilities. A gift that is a voice in the silence. The calm in the storm. The action in the apathy and the rest in the busyness. A gift that is in the present of what is with no changing the past or determining the future. A gift that is the present. The present of what we call life. Life in all its fullness, where we can discover and event, make and deliver. The preciousness of life, where the first fruits of a bud can blossom or choke, where the ground is either rocky or fertile, hard or porous, can discern, determine the bloom in all its glory or the cessation of the life breath. If we were to be given so precious and fragile a gift that was ours to nurture, to love, protected by everything that is us. The baby chick, the seedling, the newborn child. But what of our lives? How do we protect our own, the most precious of gifts that we receive? We don't. We abuse ourselves with no regard for the preciousness that we are. For many with self-loathing then that makes us a danger to both themselves and to others. If we don't treat ourselves with the preciousness we deserve, how then are we to treat others with that very same preciousness? That is how the vicious cycle of depravity can begin. When the innocence of life is taken within its mist, the innocence that we are born to, the future over which a shroud is hung, not just for one, but perhaps for generations to come, and all the time the preciousness of life lost. If there is ever a chance to rebuild, to re-nurture, take the chance to see the cruel moment as a winter, when the flowers and the leaves have fallen by the wayside, the stripped back branches reach starkly towards the sky, and the roots cling to the earth and its rocky foundations like a grip of hard-won faith. There is God, our company in the questioning, the seeker after truth, the passion in our indignation, always gentle, tenderly holding us all in love, still holding the preciousness of life to which all are given. We can't imagine when in the midst of life that preciousness is destroyed, deliberately or wantonly, through the ignorance of the blind eye with its head in the sand. The vulnerability that is violated, the increase in vulnerability being the conclusion. Trust, self-worth, identity, all lost beyond imagination and we, the lucky ones, don't and can't understand how the preciousness of life is destroyed. The image of God in another changed and yet God is there in the pain, in the loss, in ways unimaginable for God is beyond all our understanding and thank God for that. The leaves that fall, the branches that are laid bare are not a sign that life has gone, but a sign that life is repairing, if given the opportunity to do so. And because we are created, united in the preciousness of life, we are united, vulnerable to one another, vulnerable in our own self and vulnerable to each other. We therefore protect with all we are, sometimes not understanding how, but with hearts full of love. John Wesley had a wonderful way of summing up the words of Jesus when he said, Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Doing that with a heart for God, doing that with a heart for the vulnerable, doing that in the safest possible way, that is protecting the precious sanctity of life. To ensure the winter of our lives is prevented and the joyous illuminating light of the sun shines brightly, always, that the preciousness of life is seen clearly as a strength, openly vulnerable and positively protected. Listen to these words of Irish poet Louis, Louis McNeese. It's called the prayer before birth, which is a prayer to withstand the demands and challenges of life. And we are called upon to safeguard the precious life by not making any demands or challenges, either directly or inadvertently, 
or with apathy. I am not yet born, O oh hear me. Let not the blood-sucking bat, or the rat, or the stoat, or the club-footed ghoul come near me. I am not yet born, console me. I fear that the human race may with tall walls war me, with strong drugs dope me, with wise lies lure me, on black racks rack me, in blood baths roll me. I am not yet born. Provide me with water to dandle me, grass to grow for me, trees to talk to me, sky to sing to me, birds and a white light in the back of my mind to guide me. I am not yet born. Forgive me for the sins that in me the world shall commit. My words when they speak to me, my thoughts when they think me, my treason engendered by traitors beyond me, my life when they murder by means of my hands, my death when they live me. I am not yet born. Rehearse me in the parts I must play, in the cues I must take, when old men lecture me, bureaucrats hector me, mountains frown at me, lovers laugh at me, the white waves call me to folly and the desert calls me to doom, and the beggar refuses my gift and my children curse me. I am not yet born, oh hear me. Let not the man who is beast or who thinks he is God come near me. I am not yet born, oh fill me, with strength against those who would freeze my humanity, would dragoon me into a lethal automaton, would make me a cog in a machine, a thing with one face, a thing, and against all those who would dissipate my entirety, would blow me like thistle down hither and thither, or hither and thither, like water held in the hands, would spill me. Let them not make me a stone, and let them not spill me, otherwise kill me. <laughs>